Welcome, crypto fam, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. In today's show, I'll be sharing the latest technical analysis. Robert Kiyosaki shares Bitcoin to blast off in October. Means time to buy more of the bitty or bye-bye. Also breaking news, Bitcoin miner difficulty hits yet another all-time high. According to high priest Bitcoin Max Kaiser, as we predicted, inflation is zooming higher. Bitcoin is the ultimate anti-inflation commodity. Preach. Bitcoin ETF 79 million outflow ends a two-week bull run amid sideways Bitcoin price action. Jackson will also be discussing crypto academic slam dun dun uh, controversial ECB paper blasting the biddy. We'll also be discussing legendary investor Paul Tudor Jones longs Bitcoin as all roads lead to inflation. Amen to that. Tesla likely still owns 780 million worth of the biddy despite the recent shuffle, according to Arcam Intelligence. We'll also be discussing Discussing Bitcoin forecast at 200,000, according to Bernstein. I'll be sharing their latest analysis. All this plus so much more, and more in today's show. If you're new to the live stream and the channel, very important to smash the likes. I mean, if you're not smashing the like, what are you doing with your life? Then hit the subscribe, hit the bell icon, turn on all notifications. When you hit that bell icon, pretty lit pretty lit. But anyways, fam, uh, today is pod episode 1796. I'm your host, JV. It's October 23rd, 2024. A lot to share with you in the markets. Uh, let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. Uh, we'll pull up coin 360. As you can see on your screen, uh, we got Bitcoin down 2% on the day, maintaining above 66,300, a quite of a pullback since we just tapped roughly 69 the other day. Ether's down 5%, trading back at 25 hundo. Majority of the market correcting and in the red. And checking out coinmarketcap.com. We currently got a 57.5% BTC dominance as it continues on the rise. Market cap sitting at 2.28 trillion. The Bitcoin market cap sitting at 1.3 trillion. Took a bit of a pullback, and we got 77 billion worth of volume in the past 24 hours. And the Ether dominance is at like an all-time low, 13.2 percent, and I think it'll continue to dwindle, in my opinion. But what do I know? Anything shared on this stream is not financial advice. Everything you hear is for entertainment purposes only. And with that being shared, the top 100 crypto gainers of the past 24 hours, we got Jupiter up 5%. We got Leo up 3%. And Whiff up a modest 3%. That's because the majority of the market is correct and in the red. But what are you going to do? That's crypto. 24-7, we don't sleep around yonders. And checking out the crypto bubbles. Uh, we get a visual perspective. Let's start on the daily. Unfortunately, Rex City here in the alt market. Uh, the majority of everything correcting and in the red, unfortunately. And uh, zoom in out. We'll check out the monthly. The monthly chart, not chart, but, you know, whatever we call this says. Um, I don't know. It's safe to say 60, 40 in the green. And uh, checking out the Crypto Green Interior Index, we're at 71 in green. Yesterday is 70, last week is 73, and last month of 50 neutral. And checking out the time chain calendar, we have 182,951 blocks to go until the next halving of 2028. TikTok next block every 10 minutes Approximately. And we're currently on block height 867,049. But who's counting besides JV? And uh, you can currently exchange one US dollar for just over 1,500 sats. Uh, currently 1,509. Stack sats accordingly. And as my man says, get in where you fit in. So there you go, yo. Let's continue with our TA, our technical analysis. We'll check out some of the live charts where the Bitcoin price action is likely to go next. And uh, yeah, so. Here we go. Bitcoin's repeating bearish engulfing trend and spot ETF outflows boost odds of sub $60,000 biddy. That's right. Uh, Bitcoin forms a daily bearish engulfing candle. Bitcoin's 2.5% decline on the 21st formed the bearish engulfing pattern on the daily chart, as you can see on your screen. A bearish engulfing pattern indicates a short-term or long-term reversal and has a success rate of 60-70%, depending upon market confirmations. Over the past seven months, each bearish engulfing pattern near a range high has been followed by a steep correction. The drawdowns became progressively deeper after each occasion, which price dropping as much as 26% between July of 29th and August 5th. 
However, the major bearish concern stems from another set of the events which have directly impacted the prices over the past few months. Bitcoin's future and derivatives markets have played a significant part of the Bitcoin recent price action, with Bitcoin's open interest exceeding that $40 billion level as the price rallied to 69 Gs. However, a negative spot order book, CVD, continues to plague the biddy, which highlights the lack of the spot buyers on the exchanges. As observed in the chart, an indirect correlation with the evaluated open interest, negative spot CVD, and a bearish engulfing pattern generally results in downside price action for the king crypto. And sitting or keeping this in your mind, a Bitcoin's correction track record from the previous setups, a drop to 60,000 would not be abnormal. Now with the prices failing to move above 70,000, October 21st, we got close. Bitcoin institutional investors may have taken their foot off the pedal as US ETF registered an outflow of almost or close to 79 million on October 22nd. Previously, the net negative ETF inflows were observed back on October 10th with an $81 million outflow. Pretty wild. And let's pull up some of the live charts here uh, via TradingView via Coinbase. And welcome everyone just joining the live stream. It's good to have you guys in the building. Crypto surge in the building. Here we are. We're looking at the one hour chart live and in the flesh. This is TradingView via Coinbase. We got a right shoulder formation which you can see in the purple. Bring it. But we do have a bear target. It's currently sitting at 63,500. Will the bears prevail? Or will the bulls prevail? Let me know your thoughts there. And going from the one hour, let's check out the four hour. Let's go. A uh, four hour chart. You can see we do have a bull green, or uh, sorry, a bull blue target sitting at 81.3. And then we got the bear target sitting all the way down at like uh, 49.9, just shy of 50 Gs. That's the four hour. And zooming out from the four hour, we'll check out the one day. The one day says, here you go. Rising wedge formation, a couple of bear targets. On your radar here, 49.8, and we also have 47.7. Zooming out from the daily, let's go to the most sexy chart there is, which is the weekly. We have a cup and handle target sitting at roughly 124 Gs in play for Q4. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the Q4 target. And uh, zooming out from there, we'll take a quick look at the monthly, and then I'll check the comments. Let me know where you feel that price action is likely to take us. We've had seven months of consecutive sideways trading action on the monthly charts. Will October put an end to that madness? You let me know your thoughts, family. I read your comments out loud. Let's motherfucking go. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki says Bitcoin to blast off in October. Means time to buy more of the Bitcoin or bye-bye. And uh, also Bitcoin minor difficulty hits yet another all-time high. And uh, Max shares, as we predicted, inflation is zooming higher. Bitcoin is the ultimate anti-inflation commodity. This was off the back of the news. Stanley Drunken Miller, the billionaire investor, is shorting the U.S. Treasuries with a record setting 20% of his entire portfolio. So shout out uh, Stanley Drunken Miller and shout out to the high priest of the biddy, the one and only Max Kaiser. But our next headline, Bitcoin ETF 79 million outflow ends the two-week bull run amid the sideways Bitcoin price. However, we didn't end no bull run, just a small hiccup on the road to the moon, in my opinion. But let's break this down nonetheless. Bitcoin price actions already taken its toll on institutional demand, even as Bitcoin hovers within 10% of all-time highs. The US ETF inflows flipped negative October 22nd on aggregate down uh, 79 million on the day. The red daily tally came courtesy of one ETF product, which is the ARK21 shares Bitcoin ETF. Shout out Kathy Wood. Now, which had outflows? 134 million. The remaining products saw either inflows or no activity, according to Farside Data. The largest ETF by assets under management, which is none other than the BlackRock, their IBIT. Uh, managed 43 million of the inflow, still considerably lower than the 329 million the day prior. Uh, quoting the whale panda, price just going sideways, around 67 Gs. That's right, that's right where we're at. Now, the last time that the US ETFs ended a day with a net negative flow was all the way back October 10th, when they shed 81 million. Now, the ETFs have enjoyed a broad uh, renaissance over the past month. Data uploaded to X by the co founder of CryptoQuant revealed that the October 18th institutional ETF ownership is now about 20%. Uh, thanks to the spot ETFs, 1,179 institutions have joined the Bitcoin cap table this year, as you can see right here. And in addition to the domestic demand, the European investors, where my Europeans at, have allocated over 100 million to the US products year-to-date. 
And last week, net inflows crossed that 20 billion milestone for the first time with total assets under management hitting a record 65 billion. And in a recent research published in conjunction with the largest U.S. exchange, Coinbase, on-chain analytics firm Glassnode called the ETF success one of the biggest stories in the market. Uh, quoting them here, in Q3, U.S.-based Bitcoin ETF saw over 5 billion of the net inflows, underscoring the strong demand for direct exposure to Bitcoin amongst institutional investors. These ETFs have become key drivers of liquidity and accessibility, making it easier for the broader range of the market participants to gain the exposure to the bitty without the complexities of the direct ownership. But you all know this, and I'll just make it very clear. Ain't nothing like self-custody. Even though you can have exposure to Bitcoin through Bitcoin ETFs, that Bitcoin uh, ETF BTC can all be confiscated, not your keys, not your coins. That's the bigger picture. Hence why we preach the self-custody. You know what I mean? Uh, let's continue with the headlines. Our next story, we discuss the latest outflows, inflows of the ETFs. This is interesting. Crypto Academic slams the controversial ECB paper blasting the bitty. That's right. The European Central Bank recently launched a FUD piece, a hit piece against Bitcoin. So let's break this one down. A controversial European Central Bank paper published earlier this month that stopped just short of calling Bitcoin a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> Ironic. They're calling Bitcoin a Ponzi scheme when clearly the US dollar and the Fed is the biggest Ponzi scheme. But I digress. It was slammed in a lengthy rebuttal by a group of the crypto academics. Shout out to the crypto academics. The ECB paper portrays Bitcoin's volatility, lack of productive contribution, and wealth concentration as critical flaws, wrote Murray Rudd and the Bitcoin advocacy organization Satoshi Action Fund. In the rebuttal released October 22nd, which means yesterday, the crypto academics critiqued the October 12th ECB working paper by Ulrich Binciel and Jurgen Schaff that caused outrage amongst the crypto advocates. The rebuttal concluded a combination of methodological weakness and personal and institutional biases undermine uh, the ECB's paper's academic uh, objectivity, which fails to provide a credible analysis of the utility or future of the bitty. The ECB paper presented a negative assessment of Bitcoin's long-term viability and its impact on society. Now, while positioning CBDCs as a superior solution for modern financial systems, you know what, ECB? Go F yourselves. You're not fooling anyone, just saying. Uh, Rudd said the ECB report authors misinterpreted the Bitcoin primary purpose, incorrectly claiming it shifted from payments to investments while misunderstanding its technological foundations, particularly regarding proof of work and decentralization. Exactly why they don't like it, decentralization. And by focusing on the early limitations, Ben Seal and Schaff, it sounds like Peter Schiff got shaft. They failed to acknowledge the significant progress made in improving the scalability and efficiency. He added the paper presented several flawed arguments, uh, claiming uh, Bitcoin's wealth concentration, ignoring the fact that many large wallets are exchanges holding funds for millions of users. Good point. He added the ECB's arguments about the Bitcoin lack of intrinsic value overlooked its utility as a store of value and network effects and criticism of these assets volatility failed to recognize this as a characteristic of early stage technology adoption. Rudd said the ECB's critique of the Bitcoin wealth distribution also fails to recognize the broader implications of inflation within traditional financial systems. I mean, this is the decline of the U.S. purchasing power since 2020. Can you see a trend? That's right. And I will dare say the U.S. dollar is mathematically guaranteed to decrease purchasing power just as we have been witnessing since 2000 because the money printer will continue to go burr. And Bitcoin has the opposite effect. It is mathematically guaranteed to increase your purchasing power against the dollar. That's a fact. Now, conflict of interest. The rebuttal highlighted in the ECB author's roles in developing the central bank digital currency or the digital euro, which represents a significant conflict of interest. Quoting them here, given the ECB's strategic focus on developing the CBDC, it is reasonable to infer that the authors, at best, have a vested interest in portraying Bitcoin as an inferior speculative, well, of course, common sense. The central bank also overlooked several key benefits of Bitcoin, including its role, financial inclusion, and cross-border payments. Naturally, the central bank is going to flood Bitcoin because Bitcoin puts the central bank out of business. It makes the central bank obsolete. Or as in the words of the high priest Bitcoin, Max Kaiser, Bitcoin severs the heads of the central banking cartels. 
So it's a given. I'm glad to see the central bank fighting Bitcoin. It just proves we're right and they're wrong. The rebuttals co-authors were Axiom Capital General Partner, Alan Farrington, Freddie New from the Bitcoin Policy UK, and Dennis Porter from the Satoshi Action Fund. Shout out, Dennis Porter. And uh, Ben Seal said that after reading the abstract of the rebuttal, it looks to be not being focused on our paper of October of 2024, but to be very broad defense of Bitcoin against all sorts of criticism. Schaff shared, they say, in the abstract, we were positioned positioning CBDCs as superior solutions for modern financial systems, while our paper doesn't even mention the CBDCs. But here's all you need to know. Bitcoin will continue to increase your purchasing power. The dollar will continue to decrease your purchasing power. Stack the biddies accordingly. Those who hoard fiat as a store of value, what do we call them, folks? Don't make me pull out my Mikey Sailor clips. But like most of the people who are buying assets at some point want to sell the assets at a profit. False. Our next story for the day. Legendary investor billionaire Paul Tudor Jones longs Bitcoin as all roads lead to inflation. Now, he is one of the smarter money managers out there. Max talks very highly of Paul Tudor Jones, so it's an honor to be discussing him bullish on Bitcoin here today. So yeah, the billionaire investor said all roads lead to the inflation in a recent interview on CNBC yesterday, October 22nd. He added he was long on gold and long on the biddy, stating the commodities are so ridiculously underowned. Let me know if you agree with billionaire venture mofo. I probably have some basket of gold, Bitcoin, and commodities, and NASDAQ, something like that. And I own zero fixed income, as he shared on the Squawk Box. Again, I am long gold. I am long Bitcoin. I think commodities are ridiculously underowned, so I am long commodities. I probably have some basket of gold, the Bitcoin, commodities, and NASDAQ, something like that. And I own zero fixed income. Now, we also have Pompliano, who commented on the revelation, jesting it was probably nothing. Uh, you know what I mean? He shared here, Paul Tudor Jones uh, going along in the Bitcoin and gold speaks volumes. Inflation as a solution to the debt problem could be decentralized assets like Bitcoin even more attractive. Amen. So let me know if you agree with that. And Jones also explained inflation will occur no matter what the central bank does because the country needs to tackle its debt to the GDP problems. Quoting him here. If we are trying to stabilize the debt to the GDP, we want to run the most dovish monetary policy that we can without letting inflation become too much of a tax in the citizenry. Now, the total U.S. public debt as a percentage of the gross domestic product is currently 120%, according to the Fed's Bank of St. Louis. A high debt-to-GDP ratio can limit a country's ability to respond to economic shocks, increase the risk of debt default and lead to higher interest rates. It can also lead to a vicious cycle of debt, inflation, and reduced economic growth potential, ultimately threatening the country's long-term economic stability. Now, the U.S. national debt is currently a whopping $35.7 trillion as it is increasing exponentially. And quoting Pompliano, it took 221 years for the U.S. to create the first $12 trillion of national debt. Let that sink in. We added another $12 trillion of debt in the last five years insanity. I mean, look at that hockey stick mofo on the chart. Staggering pace of the new debt. The trillions is only going to continue to increase faster and faster like a, what would we call that? Like a snowball effect. You know I mean, no one can slow it down or stop it. The banks are doomed. However, the world's central banks and masters of monetary policy will paint a different picture. Of course they will. It's called lying. It's called gaslighting. In its World Economic Outlook forecast yesterday, the International Monetary Fund, everyone's least favorite folks over at the IMF, claimed that the battle against inflation is largely won. That's hilarious. That's like saying the war on terror or the war on drugs is won. It's a oxymoron. You know what I mean? Now, global inflation rates surged during the Novid lockdowns, but they have come down since. However, the real rate of the inflation, which is measured by the ever-increasing cost of fuel, food, energy, and utility bills for regular consumers, continues to increase in most countries. In fact, it's higher than it's ever been here in the States. And we don't need no suit and Thai mofo telling us on TV, we got inflation under control, less than 3%. Things have never looked so great. We don't need mis constipated yelling coming out and saying, Bonance, the dollar's never been stronger. You know what I mean? Like, go F yourself, suits. All we need to know, go to the grocery store. How much buying power does $100 give you nowadays? Not much. 
That's like three to five grocery items in the cart. I'm not even exaggerating. Shit is crazy right now. Inflation is all-time high. Uh, look at inflation just in the, the real estate market. Look at inflation when it comes to your food prices. It's ridiculous. You know what I mean? You used to be able to go to the grocery store for 20, 30 bucks and actually buy a few things. Now, oh, paper towels, $22. Scratching my head like, okay, how much are these paper plates? $25. Whoa. Okay. So for $50, I can get a paper towel and some paper plates. But we have inflation under control, folks. Nothing to see here. It's mind boggling the stupidity from these suits. Uh, here's the latest with Tesla. Uh, they recently moved 780 million. I know Max Geyser tweeted that they're not selling it. He was moving it allegedly, according to Max. Uh, Tesla was moving the Bitcoin to what's his name, uh, Howard Lutnick's bank to borrow against it. It's like I guess like a Bitcoin bank which is pretty lit. But anyways, electric car manufacturer Tesla probably still owns its entire Bitcoin stash worth 780 million. Despite transferring all the funds to identified wallets October 15th, according to blockchain analytic firm Arcam, quoting them here, we believe that the Tesla wallet movements that were reported last week were wallet rotations with Bitcoin still owned by Tesla. Tesla split the 11,500 Bitcoin between seven wallets, holding between 1,100 and 2,200 of the biddies. October 15th, uh, wallet addresses have been identified Identified as receiving the largest batches worth 142 million and 128 million, respectively. So let me know if you agree with Max that there's no intention to sell, but probably borrowing against the Bitcoin. Now, the massive transfers initially fueled fear of a potential market dump, prompting anxiety amongst platforms like X. Still, the wallets haven't moved any of the Bitcoin funds since October 15th. It also hasn't affected the Bitcoin price, which increased 5% from the time of the Tesla transfers to 69.2 October 21st, and I think we tapped out at 69.5. CoinGecko showed the Bitcoin since pulled back 2%. We're currently at around 67 Gs. And while it isn't clear why Tesla made the transfers, Arkham noted some observers speculate the funds may be moving to a custodian, potentially allowing the billionaire firm to secure a loan against the Bitcoin. And that's what Max Kaiser responded because he knows Howard Lutnick, the billionaire investor they've met up over in El Salvador with Bugele. I've seen the proof of works via the photos. So more than likely just borrowing against the bitty. Now, Tesla currently uses Coinbase Prime Custody to store the Bitcoin. Tesla executives may reveal their plans with the Bitcoin during the third quarter earnings call scheduled after the bell October 23rd. And if Arkham analysis is correct, Musk's firm remains the fourth biggest corporate hodler of the bitty, trailing only business intelligence firm, the one and only MicroStrategy. And Bitcoin Bitcoin miners marathon digital and riot platforms. According to the Bit Treasury's data, Musk's spacecraft manufacturing business, SpaceX, still holds 8,285 of the biddy as well. We're at 560 million, the seventh largest Bitcoin holdings by a private firm. So yeah, Elon is bullish with Tesla with the biddy, but also SpaceX. Tesla first purchased Bitcoin all the way back in 2021, buying one and a half billion worth of the crypto. And I bet you they wish they never sold because it's up tremendously since he did that. And they did sell a big portion of it. Tesla CEO Elon briefly accepted Bitcoin as a payment for the company vehicles in March of 2021, then reversed it, spreading some Bitcoin FUD. That's around the time Max and Stacy went on the F Elon tour. Y'all know what's up. Now for our featured story of the day. Bitcoin forecast to hit $200,000 by the end of 2025. According to the latest Bernstein report, so let's break this baby down. Check it. The price of Bitcoin can go as high as 200000 per coin by the end of next year as Bitcoin enters a new institutional era. According to an October 22nd report published by Bernstein Research. Y'all remember the Bernstein Bears as a child? That was one of my favorite book collections. But nonetheless, I think this is a different Bernstein. Their 160-page black book makes the case for why Bitcoin miners will continue to consolidate the industry. Matthew Siegel, Vanek, head of digital asset research, said in the post on X, 10 global asset managers now own $60 billion wrapped as regulated Exchange-traded funds, we know as ETFs, compared to the $12 billion and to the September 22nd, according to the report. And by the end of 2024, check this, 
end. We expect Wall Street to replace Satoshi as the top Bitcoin wallet, I repeat, by 2024 end, meaning the end of this year in Q4, which means within the next couple of months, we expect Wall Street to replace Satoshi as the top Bitcoin wallet. We all know speculation. Satoshi holds roughly like 1.1 million Bitcoin and roughly 20,000 plus wallets. Well, they're saying Wall Street will have the majority of the Bitcoin here soon. And here you can actually see the year-to-date flows. Uh, iBit clearly leading the pack. And we got Fidelity up in here. You can see in the green, along with the iShares Ethereum Trust in the green. But anyways, Bitcoin has dominated the ETF landscape this year. The institutional FOMO, like a mofo as of January 11th, comprising six of the top 10 most successful launches in 2024, according to a post by Nate Jirasi, president of the ETF store and investment advisor. Shout out Nate the Great. Institutional analysts, including Bernstein, JP Morgan, and hedge fund vet, Paul Tudor Jones, PDJ, are increasingly bullish on the biddy ahead of the U.S. presidential election November 5th, two weeks out. Who's going to win the election? Let me know in the chat. Now, investors are turning towards gold and Bitcoin in a debasement trade as they brace for the catastrophic scenario amid rising geopolitical tension, J.P. Morgan said in the October 3rd report, quoting them here, rising geopolitical tension and the coming U.S. election are likely to reinforce the debasement trade, thus favoring both gold and Bitcoin. Now, the so-called debasement trade refers to the spike in the gold demand caused by factors ranging from structurally higher geopolitical uncertainty since 2022. And just for the record, gold just hit another all-time high, uh, close to 2,800. Right now, it's still above 2,700. So Peter Schiff is doing the shifty dance as I speak. And on October 22nd, Paul Tudor Jones, who founded Hedge Fund Tudor Investment Corporation, said he is longing the biddy and other commodities because all roads lead to inflation after the U.S. presidential election. Quoting them here, I probably have some basket of gold, Bitcoin, commodities, and NASDAQ, and I would own zero fixed income. He shared that live on Squad Box. Meanwhile, the bitty miners are poised to recover from a post-having slump in mid-2024 as the industry consolidates and crrr, cashes in on the energy demand from the AI. According to the Bernstein Bears, I mean analysts, <laughs> we expect Riot, Clean Spark, and Marathon to consolidate the Bitcoin mining industry. The Bitcoin Network April having event, April 19th, reduced the mining rewards from six and a quarter Bitcoin to three. 0.125 bitty per block. Meanwhile, the demand for the AI powered computational power is a surging. Nick Hansen, CEO of mining firm Luxor, reported said miners could earn two to three dollars per AI per kilowatt of energy expended compared to the 15 to 20 cents from the Bitcoin mining. Meanwhile, several Bitcoin miners, including Core Scientific, Hive Digital, and Hut 8, Hut Hut Hike, are embracing the AI as a secondary revenue source. But what are your thoughts surrounding Bernstein analysts? <laughs> projecting 200,000 by the end of 2025, as well as Wall Street surpassing the wallet of Satoshi by the end of this year. And Q4, I'll let you boy. And welcome everyone to the live stream. We're live and in the flesh. It's 5 p.m. here in Puerto Rico. It's 5 p.m. in New York. What's crack a lacking? Welcome and uh, welcome to the QA segment of the live stream. I'm going to do my best to read your comments out loud. Calm down and buy some of the biddy. Damn straight. Who is going to sell their biddy to the Wall Street? Only 450 are produced each day. There is no way. Wall Street will surpass 1.1 million by then. I wonder why they're so optimistic about it. Maybe collectively, because you got to fathom. BlackRock alone has probably 400-ish Bitcoin right now, right? And BlackRock also owns MicroStrategy, right? shareholder. I think BlackRock's the largest shareholder. So virtually all these major companies that have a lot of Bitcoin is some way controlled or owned by BlackRock, which is Wall Street. So if you add all that Bitcoin up, they're probably accurate. Am I crazy or is that right? Let me know, family. But that's my thinking. All the Bitcoin owned by any publicly traded company, MicroStrategy, any asset manager, BlackRock is Wall Street. Correct me if I'm wrong. So collectively, they probably are close to Satoshi Stash. Thinking about it. Let me know. There's less than 3 million Bitcoin in the exchange reserves. Miners produce 450 Bitcoin per day. Even if the ETS bought all of that, they still fall way short of the 1.1 million Bitcoin. Well, what's the number right now if we were to collectively add up all the Bitcoin owned and controlled by all the major corporations and things controlled by BlackRock or the government? 
because the government's sitting on 200,000 Bitcoin, BlackRock sitting on like three to 400,000 Bitcoin. MicroStrategy is sitting on 250,000 Bitcoin. That alone takes us ballpark 750,000 Bitcoin. Add up all the other asset managers and all the other publicly traded, we're probably close to it. I'm just assuming, I'm thinking out loud, but that seems logical to me because the government is ultimately in control of all of the companies through BlackRock. 